everybody had a good summer and welcome to fall. Summer sure quickly flew by this year, like always. Um, I guess we'll call the meeting to order. My clock says 7.33 a.m. And uh, something new, which Pat was going to speak to you today, um, and I guess I'll just do it. It's the land acknowledgement statement, which you see on the agenda. And just so everyone knows, this is a uh, direction and a resolution from council that all boards and committee members uh, are to do this at the start of every meeting. Um, so I just need to read this at the start of every meeting going forward, and then we can go from there. Uh, so the land acknowledgement statement, we acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the Anishinaabe people. We wish to recognize a long history of Indigenous people of Canada and show our respect to them today. We recognize their stewardship of the land, and we all live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship. Are there any de declarations of pecuniary interest this morning? Okay, not hearing any. Moving on to delegations. Do we have any delegations this morning, Lisa? I don't know of no, any. We don't. Okay. I trust everyone's had a chance to review the minutes um, from last meeting. If anybody has any questions or concerns about those, I think Kim sent through some comments maybe on them. Um, I didn't see anything, but if anybody else does, please let us know. I just had a couple of small edits and, and uh, just that the, the funding that we've applied for has not been um, confirmed yet, that we're expecting a decision in December on that grant. And also that the, the name of the program um, that we applied for, it was hoteling suites like, um, like hotel. So it was just a, a small minor errors that, um, that Nicole has already um, looked at. Okay. So with those noted changes, uh, I assume there's no concerns if I get a mover and a seconder on those. Don't all jump at once. I see Matt and Todd as a seconder. All in favor? Assuming everyone, yep, okay. Uh, before we jump into reports, Lisa, maybe we should recognize our new board member this morning. Um, I don't see him on the top of my screen. I assume he's here. Alex, is Alex on? I'm struggling to see. I don't actually see him. Did it respond saying he was Okay, so maybe I don't need to do that. We'll do that at the next meeting, but on July uh, 5th, Council did support uh, Alex Macheknoff joining the board. Um, we don't see him on the meeting this morning, so at the next meeting we'll do an introduction and a welcome to him. Um, okay. So let's move on to Lisa's coordinator's report. Um, thanks. Uh, so I just wanted to give uh, just an update on some of the things we did in the summer. We were able to do quite a few things towards the end of the summer, which was great. Um, so we had our daycation contest and we had 21 businesses participate. Um, we had 200 entries into the contest. Um, we promoted it everywhere, and um, the winner received $21 $50 gift cards, and we announced that on uh, the radio, which was great. Um, summer sale days, we promoted from August 16th to 28th. We did that with uh, the banner and uh, the chamber. So lots of businesses were uh, sharing our, you know, sales. They had sales. Um, so we think that went overall. We think it went well. Um, Sarah is uh, someone from Listowel, and uh, she's a world-renowned uh, violinist. And I found out that she was doing concerts on the Bruce and thought that this would be something great that our community could have and uh, reached out to her, and she was happy to perform. So we had that down in the park. Um, obviously, we were very careful with COVID and made sure everyone social distanced and um, 
it was a really uh, great event. Um, I think Nick was there and could probably comment on it. Um, so we were really excited to have her and we kind of toot it as a thanks to the community for supporting our businesses. Here's a, a free concert for you to attend uh, on us. And uh, we asked for donations. So we raised over a thousand dollars, 700 in cash and three to five hundred dollars in um, food for the food bank. So it was just a really good community outreach, just something nice we could do. Um, and Sarah has indicated that she's going to be back on the Bruce next year and she'd be happy to do it with us again, um, pending uh, we were interested. So I thought that was um, just a great thing to do. Um, our flowers are looking great. Our banners need to come down. Um, I was hoping to do it this week, but unfortunately, there's quite a few um, staffing issues this week. Uh, so we're going to take these summer banners down and put the fall banners up next week. Um, the Chamber Awards are coming up, so we're going to be supporting that and uh, promoting that. Um, and then I just wanted to talk to you about the 2021 holiday plan and um, just make sure that oh sorry and one more thing for the summer we've been promoting people using the shop uh, dollars um, because we have over a hundred thousand dollars in circulation um, so we offered top-ups to businesses um, if they promoted it and brought in their dollars and so for the months of July and August um, which are not busy months for us in terms of getting our dollars back. Um, Twenty-two thousand dollars have come back in, so we're 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 happy with that because it means they're getting used in our businesses um, here in Listowel. So um, we popped up uh, five percent of anything that's brought in. Um, so that's about a thousand dollars that we've topped up, and we're sharing that cost with the uh, chamber. Um, and they are still awaiting whether or not the grant they applied for to continue this program can continue. And if it does, then our cost, we will be paid back. So wanted to also talk about that one. Um, the holiday season, it's tricky again because COVID doesn't want to go away ever. Um, so I'm looking at things that I think can promote the community, but are also COVID friendly. Um, so we're going to sponsor the parade again. Um, that's going to be held on November 27th. Uh, we're going to do, and of course, this is a pending everyone is comfortable with this. Um, the deck, the halls weekend, it's just like an open house for merchants. We're going to advertise that for November 25th to 27th. Um, which is the same weekend as the parade, which is why we're trying to do it. Uh, we're looking at the business decorating contest. I would want businesses to enter by the 3rd, um, and we'll judge it the week of December 9th to the 12th, and the winners will be announced uh, December 14th or 15th. We're going to do a community decorating contest. Uh, that tripled in uh, people participating last year. It was really well received. Um, so we're looking to enter by December 13th, judge it also the 14th and 15th, because I'm going to have the same judges, so they just can do it all at once. And we'll announce the winner around the 16th, or the winners. Um, we're looking at what we can do with the shop dollar promotion. It really depends on the grant or if we do like a contest again with that. Um, I'd like to do a holiday selfie with our snowman bench. That would be new. Uh, last year, we were hesitant because of COVID, but I think um, we're at a point where outdoor things are okay. Um, you know, we have our park benches, we have the, the seating downtown for people to eat for restaurants, and I think it would be really fun. I got a lot of selfies sent to me last year, so I just kind of want to build on that. Um, holiday decorations start uh, November 13th or November 12th. Um, a meeting with the committee on the 13th. Holiday decorations are, I think, going to be my most um, stressful item because of COVID. Um, there's very little available, very little can get here on time. Um, Bill, who puts up all our decorations, is even having a hard time getting lights. 
So we're unsure if we can get enough lights to restrand a bunch of things, which is um, a little stressful, but I think the plan is, if everyone is okay with it, uh, is that the trees that used to be at the signs will no longer be at the signs. They're, they're dying, they're getting really old. Uh, we're having to restrand them, which is costing a couple hundred dollars a tree every year. And we're gonna move giant snowflakes, um, similar to the ones we have at the roundabout, the ones we have downtown, um, to the signs to replace the trees because we know those work and they stay on, uh, which is a problem with the, the, the trees at the roundabout. They keep burning out. Um, and then I'm gonna try to order uh, some new decorations to replace where those um, stars have been. Um, I'm also trying to order some more shatterproof balls because we need new balls for our wreath. I'm also trying to order the ribbon. Um, they think they can get those things in for me for the end of the month, um, but it's we've never experienced this where we just can't get things. So if everyone is okay with me changing it up just a little bit, but still having things at the listable signs, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, are there any concerns or thoughts on that? Okay, um, we're gonna do the holiday booklet again, hopefully with a banner that would go out the week of the open house uh, deck the halls. We're gonna advertise on the banner, the ranch, Blackburn, the website, social media, the chamber sign. Um, so just really promoting the season. And I think that just, it's a lot of things, but I think I can manage it all. And it just, I think it's, they're all COVID friendly. So that's kind of my goal with the holidays. I may go a tiny bit over my budget um, just because of how hard it is to get some things, but I'm still within the overall 119 budget because there's been things that we haven't done. So at this point, I don't plan to go over, um, but I wanted to talk about that. So. That's where I am for the holiday season. Are there any questions or concerns or suggestions? Okay, I'm just moving on to my list. Um, so we need to talk about the budget and the marketing plan for 2022. Uh, believe it or not, I need to present next year's budget in November to council. Uh, Scott and I have discussed it. We're probably going to present at the end of November versus the first or second week of December, just because December is really busy. Um, and I just need some thoughts and discussion on what we want to do with the budget. Uh, last year, we increased it only by a couple hundred dollars uh, in light of what was going on with the businesses, uh, the situation has not improved greatly for the businesses with COVID. And I just want a discussion on what I am working with to build a budget so that we can get it approved at our November meeting. Sorry, Lisa, you're looking for direction on items in the budget um, we need to change, or? Yeah, like it was 119300 this year. And to build the budget, I need to know what we're thinking. Are we keeping it the same? Are we increasing it? Are we just going to do a cost of living increase? Like, I just have to have a sense of what everybody is thinking so that I can start to build it for discussion in November for approval. Yeah, uh, Mr. Does anyone Chair. have any thoughts or comments? Yeah, yeah, sorry, Todd, go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Chair, if you don't mind. Um, 
I, I you know we, we try to anticipate um, globally I suppose what the municipal budget will look like um, it is fair to say that there is a strong um, wave of holding the line to the extent possible on uh, tax increases uh, generally so I, I think that you're in uh, you know a wise place if you keep fairly similar budget for the next year in terms of the total amount um, that is uh, you know used by the BAA at this point um, but the challenges we face of course and and Lisa, I'm sure you're seeing them too, is that everything is getting much more expensive um, and and sadly quickly. And so, you know, there are, certainly are some nerves, I would say, um, about our forecasts for next year. Um, we've seen dramatic rises in things like insurance, um, you know, winter salt and sand. The, in, there are things, there are commodities that, that the municipality uses that, that um, have increased by double digits. And so for us to try to hold the line and, and bring in very modest uh, general tax uh, increases is, is going to prove a challenge, especially in a growing municipality where um, the, the service realm and range is expanding. So uh, I would say start with an assumption that, you know, uh, um, the, the increase that you should plan in terms of, of um, expenditure is, is below uh, inflation at this point and, uh, and work from there if, if you want advice from the council angle. Uh, hard for me to comment too much, Lisa, since I'm not a retail owner, but uh, I guess for me, a budget is, it's really a numerical expression of a work plan. And I guess I'm not entirely sure what the work plan for 22 is. I guess if I had a better idea of that, I could comment on the budget. Uh, to me, municipal budget notwithstanding, you know, in times of crisis and when we're trying to rebuild our business community, it's probably not the time to hold the line. But then again, as I said, I'm not a retail owner, so it's a little hard for me to comment in that area. Yeah, and I, I think in terms of what we're gonna do next year, um, I, I'm looking at the marketing plan from this year and we didn't get to do a lot of those things. So I was hoping we'd get to bring back some of the things that we, we didn't get to do last year and, and be kind of similar to last year. Um, obviously, we don't know about when the space um, we have even less space than when I talked to you guys last time. So um, we just had a new business open this week. So, uh, I mean, I wanted to put a marketing plan together and a budget to present at the next meeting. Um, but again, the marketing plan was, was on my list for today too for a discussion on that. So um, it is hard. The other thing is, as um, Todd did talk about, costs going up. I can give you an example. I'm looking at these shatterproof balls for the wreaths and they need to be shatterproof in case they fall for <coughs> insurance reasons and hurting people. Um, and one ball um, is $44 for the larger size. And that's, that's a third more than I paid last time I bought one of those balls. Like, and that's one ball and we have 30 wreaths. Um, and I need to replace quite a few balls. Um, the next size is small is less, but they're nineteen dollars, and they used to be twelve. So when you, it, it, you know, and there's also um, if we want to advertise, if we want to sponsor things, like it's it's expensive. We, but at the same time, I know our businesses are not feeling any better than they did last year when we were talking about the budget. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of, I'm just looking for some feedback. I mean, Scott and I can have some discussions, uh, together, um, outside of this meeting, but ultimately the budget and the marketing plan has to be approved by you guys. So I, I want your thoughts. My thought on this, um, 
I want to be uh, fiscally responsible, but if we keep the budget the exact same and we expect to do more um, because we didn't accomplish what we wanted this year and we know costs are going to go up, at what point does the BIA suffer because we're not able to accomplish anything and people lose faith in the process of us being able to do it? I've seen it in a lot of towns that we keep the budget real nice and tight, but then you don't have any impact. We need to make sure that we're investing in the right area and doing the right things and not having a plan of where we're spending. I guess we need to know the what we're going to do and what we want to accomplish and then therefore know how much we want to spend doing it. But if we're already over budget this year and we've done less things than we would like to, next year we're going to be in the even a worse position because stuff's going to be costing more and eventually we're going to either have to do a huge increase or we're going to have to really dwindle down and not have any impact in our community. Yeah, so I would I would say that we're not over budget and it's not that we're not doing things, it's that we didn't get to do what we had planned to do. So I came up with different things that supported during COVID, but there's things that we had planned to do like win the space or like supporting Patty Fest and doing some events there that we didn't do. So we replaced it with things like the list will love local pledge. Um, so I still did things, just not what we would normally do or um, want to do, I guess, in a, in a normal year. But I do agree with you that things are going up, that if we don't increase our budget, that I will have to cut stuff out. Um, so I... So is it possible, Lisa, like, do you have a, a work plan with sort of an estimate? That would really assist me because then, you know, if you were to come back to us and say, well, I want to do all of these things, that's going to cost 10% more or 5% less or what have you, then that would, for me, that would give me some guideline to say, okay, well, that's great or no, we need to do less. Um, the other Kind of off topic, uh, on your open commercial spaces, number five and number six are actually gone, uh, just so you know. Yeah, no, I have an update on okay. that. Um, yeah, no, it's good. I, I'll have to look at numbers, what, which ones you're talking about, but I do know that um, I promoted yesterday that an Indian restaurant opened, so that takes care of a space. Um, I don't know which ones you're talking about. I'd have to look at the sheet, but... Uh, Asian G Mart's moving up to the old jam can location. Right. So, do you know what's going where they are? No, I don't know that. Right. So, I heard that they were moving, but I don't know what's going there. And then, um, what's the other one that you're talking about? Where the old, or where the, uh, the Indian restaurant is. Yeah. Yeah, and also a rumor that the one, the old Blows Travel is filled, but nothing's there yet. So that's another space gone. Um, and Barrito hasn't opened yet, but they have signs all over the place saying they're coming soon in that location. So really, we don't have a lot of space. Um, and it takes a village is moving to where the um the old tim hortons downtown is so i don't know what's going in it takes a village i haven't figured that one out yet but i know they're moving so um there's just really not a lot of space so um i mean i can put the marketing plan together and send it to everybody prior to the um meeting but i guess i'm looking for a sense of are we open to increasing the budget or do we feel like we need to keep it relatively the same? Um, it's just kind of hard to start planning um, without a little bit of guidance, I guess. Um, one question I have, refresh my memory here. We, we had talked a couple of years ago now about the, the levy changes, right, for the businesses at the top, I think removing the maxes. Where did we end up with that plan? Did we implement that or was that put on hold? No, it was done. Okay. Right. So we do have more businesses. We have some bigger businesses, and we do have that. Um, 
so we could increase and there wouldn't be a huge impact to the majority of businesses. Um, but yeah, that, that went through. So awesome. Scott, should you and I just maybe have a discussion next week and yeah, that's what I was going to say, Lisa, is I'm hearing, and I respect what Todd's saying, because that's kind of the first impression that I had as well, was maybe towing the line, um, just because of the situation we're in. And you and I have been at council presenting the budget, and I've done it myself as well, and council's always been very supportive of what the BIA does, and hasn't uh, necessarily critiqued our, our business plan or our requests to any great extent and we've never had any members of the public there objecting to it that I can recall um, but I just wonder yeah that uh, if we do propose some kind of an excess or an increase that uh, we may face some pushback so uh, and then I, I hear what Nick and Matt are saying as well about just uh, a work plan and, and trying to be proactive and make sure we're doing the proper things so maybe, yeah, if you and I could just speak next week or this week and, and have a conversation about a work plan and, and maybe put some numbers beside that and present it to the board, that may be the best way forward. That works for me. If everyone's okay with that. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, do you mind if I say a word? Uh, so my By name is means. Alex. <laughs> I am a new, I'm a new member here. Um, quite new to Listowell. It's been my fourth month. And... Um, it seems to me that it's really clear that we do need an increase in budget because the whole purpose of this business improvement uh, committee is to implement and to promote the businesses. And if we don't have enough financial support, then it defeats the purpose itself. So I do believe that we do need to consider some increase because we do feel the cost increasing from day to day life and on businesses it must be even more hard so i do think i <clears throat> i might be supporting some increase maybe not to the greatest extent but that some uh, some increase i think it would be vital for this com committee thank you thanks alex okay i Lisa, will maybe for everyone benefit where are we at in reserves? Uh, like just under 50. Sorry, how much was that? Just under 50,000, around 50,000. I'll get the exact number for our discussion. And And the reason I suggest that is just that if we do have uh, increased costs for actual physical purchases like your wreaths and your bulbs and things like that that maybe we need to pull that out of somewhere else just recognizing that we all hope things go back to normal in the future but for right now we may have to do something proactive like that just to recognize the, the increase in costs um, but again you and I can discuss that if you'd like and we can present it back to the board about where we're going to come up with the money to do the things that uh, you want to do or believe we okay. should do okay sounds good okay so any other comments on the proposed budget i think we'll leave it that lisa and i will speak further and come back with a um a work plan and a, a presentation to you guys on, on where we go from here okay perfect okay lisa okay. so the only other thing i wanted to talk to you about is memory lane um, I've gotten some quotes on fixing memory lane. Uh, it's taken a bit to get these quotes, so I'm, I'm this, this is just going, it's, it's happening, it's just going slow. Um, we had talked about the businesses applying for a facade improvement um, to help cover some of the costs. Um, but I just wanted to discuss with you the, the cost of fixing it the way that um, I think it should be fixed. Um, so to fix the front, uh, which is the exterior border trim around the archway where it says memory lane, 
Um, so that would be putting new plastic moldings, um, decorative moldings, and painting and renting a scissor lift. It's going to cost about $2,700 plus taxes. And then to repair the damaged boards within reason, remove, clean, and reinstall the poster pictures and paint the alleyway, it's gonna be about $4,600 plus tax. So that's about 7,000 before um, tax, and that's assuming everything uh, goes well. Um, this is part of our downtown. Uh, it, it looks not great. Uh, we wanna be we want our downtown to be beautiful and promoting people coming downtown. Um, you know, I'm hoping that this can go through the facade program, but that wouldn't cover it all. Um, and it's a lot right now for businesses to cover. So I'm just wondering uh, people's thoughts on helping support the cost of this. Like originally I was thinking just paint, which I can budget for as part of my beautification but this is a little bit more to do it right. Todd? I have to admit, I even have a bigger vision than that, Lisa. I think that um, those spaces uh, probably need improved lighting. Um, the, the vent on the one side probably needs to be caged in so that uh, birds can't roost there. Well, I should, I should talk to that Todd um, Lyndon is taking care of that the caging in um, yeah, great so the town is covering that when we met um, so I haven't included that because that's for sure being taken care of um, and it's not that the municipality might not do more um, I need to have more discussions with uh, Chris and Lyndon I just wanted so sorry go ahead Todd um, yeah, so uh, the, the only other piece that I think is interesting there, and I'm not sure who's looking after it, but it would be, in my opinion, worth attempting to get some, some street furniture sort of hugging the one wall. Um, I don't know what the issues are there. Um, there could be accessibility issues for all I know, uh, which would put the kibosh on that quickly. But, you know, to sort of make a welcoming environment there probably requires a couple of different steps, right? Um, I, again, don't know what commitments the municipality has made. I know that, that uh, Lyndon and Chris have been working with you and others on this, but uh, um, I do have a fondness for the idea of, of dramatically improving the, the, the street environment of, uh, of Listowel and of Atwood too. Um, and so, you know, hoping that uh, um, if there are suggestions that sort of fit within the municipal scope and represent a good capital project, that they could be uh, brought forward to the capital budget of the municipality and, and not burden this organization uh, solely with those things. And yeah, sorry, I'll just jump in with some thoughts as well. Uh, I do have a little bit of concern, Lisa, about spending BIA monies on improving private property because those buildings, like the two sides of memory lane and the roof are owned by private individuals. Um, I, I see some issue with that. And there is another, uh, be it not as well recognized lane further up the road beside Diana Suites. I think it's well one over from Diana Suites that drastically needs some improvement as well. Um, it, it's again a private building, a private landowner. So, my thought is the BIA should be acting as the coordinator to encourage these people to do the facade improvement grants and things. But I'm not sure if I was a business owner whether I would want to see BIA monies spent on improving private property. I'll leave it at that. Um, I guess Lisa and I, I'm sort of. Uh, similar to Todd in that you either do it right or don't do it at all. But I do also see Scott's point in that improving private property is actually beyond our mandate. Um, so there is a concern with that. Yeah, and it's a question as to who owns all of that property because some of that space 
could argue that the municipality owns it, so it's it's just complicated. But I do see what Scott's saying. You know, the, the piece in the front that says Memory Lane, um, that's in between the two properties, uh, I just it it just doesn't look great, and people see it as they're walking down Main Street. Um, so I can talk to. Chris and Lyndon about it. I just wanted to do a little bit of painting and fixing. Um, and we had talked about that before. Uh, this is a little bit more than, than I had thought, but I do think there's benefits to fixing it because it is part of our downtown and it's part of beautification and people use it to walk through. The one that Scott's talking about, people don't really use that one. Um, I agree it could use at least some painting in that alleyway. Um, but this is one that people walk by and use to get through to downtown and to get part to the other part. And I just think there's um, a benefit of helping out with that. So that if the board isn't feeling that way, then um, that's, you know, I can talk to Lyndon and them about it and, and see where they're at. But, but with some I, I think it needs to be done, most certainly. But I think Scott raises a valid point, that's all. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, Lisa, I, I fully agree that something should be done with it. Um, just I benefit, is there any, why is it called Memory Lane? Was that an initiative by the municipality? Does anyone know? Or like, is there is there naming rights we could put to it if we asked to... Uh, if we put out sponsorship opportunities for someone to improve it and rename it and they're like one of the businesses or something, I don't know. I'm just suggesting. Uh, it's really old. Uh, it's been there. I, I don't remember it not being there. Um, I think it was a bunch of volunteers that did it. Uh, maybe even a business or two that did it back in the day, like 30 years ago. That's like, it hasn't really been touched in that many times. It's called memory lane because if you, walk down it, you'll see very old um, pictures of what downtown looked like prior to um, it, how it looks now. So the clock tower, the, the um, I think the, the train station, there's different pictures of it from Listowel from many, many years ago. And so the businesses, didn't put that in and they definitely didn't put those pictures in they definitely didn't put the the plastic in the covers of the pictures um and so there's like sentimental value i would say to people that lived um in listowel and that live in this community for that memory lane um and that's another reason why it's hard to ask um businesses to pay for it one they they're already going through tough times and two they didn't put it there in the first place but i don't think the municipality put it there either it was it was back in the day when people could do stuff like that and volunteer and put stuff in so um there's some history there um and i think people would be maybe disappointed if it wasn't there anymore Yeah, but, but I assume that somebody assumed the responsibility about that lane and most likely it would be the municipality. So I do think uh, that we should be acting more as a mediation between the businesses and municipality to complete this work, but I don't feel that uh, we should be the one who should be sponsoring or spending money on that. Uh, and it's easy to determine the ownership of that area. There wouldn't be a problem. And that's of the benefits to business and to the municipality. And I do think that uh, shouldn't be financially invested into that. Todd, go ahead. I have to admit there's some gray area around <clears throat> the sort of partners or, or parties, if you will, to the use of that space. Um, I know that CAO Snell's talked to me about that in 
in loose detail. I don't remember exactly what he told me, but uh, I'm sure that um, you know, with the right circumstances, uh, uh, an appropriate agreement can be formulated uh, between the municipality and the parties there. You know, if we're already intending, and Lyndon has made a commitment to um, install sort of a cage or a wire or whatever to try to keep the birds from roosting there, then I think in the same uh, breath, there's there's probably the ability to formulate an agreement. And perhaps uh, my takeaway from this and, and Kim Couch's takeaway from this is that uh, we need to speak to the CAO about those those legal matters and find if there's a uh, an agreement in place or some kind of innovative agreement that we could propose to support uh, the municipality playing a more significant role in in uh, in maintaining and and working on that area, if you will. Um, so Chris and Pat and Lyndon have been working on that um, with the business owners. It is very complicated. They've been working on it for years. It's not uh, easy. This belongs to this person and this belongs to this person. Um, so there, there are stuff working on that. Um, I think I need to go back to Chris um, about how the BIA is feeling about this um, because when we had originally talked, when I had originally discussed it with the BIA, we had talked about spending some money on painting um, just to fix it up a little bit and now I'm sensing that that's something that maybe is changed, that we maybe don't want to do that either, um, spend that cost. So. Um, I need to deal with that now too. Kim. I just want to clarify that I do believe with the quotes and what's being presented that it, this is eligible under the facade improvement program. So that means half of the cost, um, all of the things that are being proposed, I believe would be eligible. So that is yeah. half of what um, is being proposed. It, it still would need to be funded um, potentially by the, the individuals who own the property. Um, and I think the municipality, I'm not sure if they own the, the sidewalk and the ceiling, but I'm not totally sure about that. So I think um, the you know tax, taxpayer funds is already going towards half of the cost of the project. Um, and just as has been raised, the, the whole issue around um, using taxpayer dollars for private property is a bit is always a bit of a challenge. And it has been something they've been trying to resolve the ownership issue um, and work on an agreement for, for years. As Lisa has said, that's quite a complex um, issue. But just, just so you know, the dollar figures that are involved, um, it would be probably half. It's 50% um, is the, what the grant is for for facade. Thanks. So 50% of the 7,000 gets us to 3,500. Are the land, are the owners kicking in any of the cash? Because I agree that it sh we shouldn't be doing something, but if we're not going to beautify our downtown and take the initiative to get people for 1,500 bucks or something out of our pool and they paid the other half, or if we need to fundraise the other 1,500, but I, I do agree that the owners should be taking an onus, for, especially if we're replacing rotten wood and doing those things. But so if 50% of the sevens covered, we're down to 3,500, and if we split that halfway again between us and somebody else, or we raise the other 1,500, I think we need to do something because if we don't beautify our downtown, we're just going to keep on attracting the wrong crowd or we're going to turn off people uh, at some point it becomes the onus of let's make the downtown as beautiful as we can yeah i would hate to see property ownership issues or legal malarkey prevent this from going forward because i mean ultimately the goal is to improve it and we should keep that goal in mind um, one way or another it needs to happen i think I mean, it, it wouldn't be difficult to determine who's the owner of all of that property, and it would be easy to check. The only thing is, I feel that it's really not our responsibility. We do need to promote businesses and list well and, and so on. But at the end of the day, who's benefiting from all of that? So I do feel that we can, I can help Lisa or 
anyone to determine who's the owners, who assumes the responsibility of this uh, sidewalks and the property, and then we should negotiate with the business owners to chip in and to we should explain how beneficial it is to have it improved and to keep upkeep. Uh, so that wouldn't be an issue. Lisa, do you know if the two building owners have applied for the facade improvement grant or anything like um, that? We were waiting to see exactly what would be involved in just fixing and getting this quote. Um, but they are open to working with us. And I've talked to Lee, um, and he's willing to help them apply. So um, that I don't think is the issue. Um, the issue is that the cost is more than I thought. It's still better than, it still could be half covered under the facade improvement. And they have indicated they're willing to work with us. Um, the thing is, is them, them fixing that space um, doesn't necessarily help them. So it's a walk through um, and the memory lane piece at the front, it, it, it's not, it, it doesn't necessarily help them. It's not the front of their building per se, it's beside their building, it's in between their building. Um, but, but they are willing to help us and they're flexible and they're willing to discuss it. And, um, and I don't know if they knew half of it was gonna be covered, how much they would be willing to pay, to be honest. I, I haven't got that far, I wanted to talk to you guys um, because I didn't want to do anything that the BIA board members were uncomfortable with going forward. So I wanted to talk to Lyndon and Chris and Pat um, and then bring the owners back in and work with Lee um, to go through the facade improvement process because he is the one running the program, he's the expert, he's the one that does all the work and he's the one that supports the businesses through that process. Um, and I would help the businesses if they needed help, but Lee has indicated he would be, he's very happy to work with them. Um, and I think they would be willing to do it. So I think half of it can get covered, like Kim said, I just wanted to bring it forward today. Okay, so maybe the direction from this is that uh, it, that we try to encourage that to keep occurring and maybe arrange a meeting between the two property owners and and Lee. Um, just for your information, because I have property that backs onto that. I don't think the ownership question is specific to the lane, like the sides of the lane and the ceiling of the lane. From my understanding, it's the dog's breakfast of land ownership in behind there. So behind that. Is behind that. Too as well, yeah. Yeah, so just so the board knows, it's it's an ownership question of all the area in behind. So in behind where it takes the villages, uh, behind naps, behind uh, where the ranch is and stuff like that. In there is just, it's uh, terrible to say the least who owns what and who has rights over what. So um, it's not necessarily the two sides of the lane and the ceiling. It's basically the groundwork going through the lane and in behind is the problem. Right. Um. So do we need any further direction on that, Lisa? Or do you want to just, we'll, so I just, we'll regroup? So my, my, my sense is that I move forward with the facade, talking to Chris, Lyndon, and Lee, and uh, see if we can move forward on, on making some improvement to it with support from me to connect that. Is that Yes. Is everyone okay with that? I'm not hearing any notes. I'm happy to help yeah. Lisa, and I think the, the, Alex offered to help if there's anything he can do. Yeah. So we have we have beautiful land registry in Ontario. So uh, there's no unclaimed land in <laughs> in the province. So if you any of you need any help to determine the ownership, that would be very easy. That would that would take me ten minutes. 
actually to tell you who owns what and what responsibility. So that would be easy, but I do think that's a good start to at least to introduce the idea to the business owners or owners of that properties around there and to invite to, to this table, to the discussion, maybe with municipality and maybe they can settle something or help. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Anybody have any further questions for Lisa this morning? Not hearing any. Um, the next thing on our agenda is the financial accounts, which were part of the package that Nicole sent out. I didn't do a total on those, but if we can just uh, assume everyone's taking a look at them. Is any questions on those accounts? Okay. Not seeing any. Could we get a mover and a seconder then to accept those, the accounts um, for information and payables? I'll move. Matthew did that. Need a seconder? Did I hear a seconder? I can't see everybody. Todd did. Okay. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, um, next item on the agenda is the council update. Todd, if I could ask you for that, please. Thank you. So um, uh, while summer uh, tends to be perceived as uh, lazy days, the council has continued to be busy. Um, I will draw attention to uh, the council meeting uh, the 2nd in July, uh, at which uh, Dr. Leith Deacon from the University of Guelph presented information about his broad ranging survey on rural resilience in the aftermath or through, I suppose, the, the pandemic more accurately. Um, it is uh, recorded in the council archives and if you haven't seen uh, Dr. Deacon's presentation about rural resilience and the, the data that was collected uh, with regards to impacts of the pandemic on, on work, on play, on life, um, it is certainly worth your attention to um, have a look at that. Um, he's made presentations at several different um, uh, opportunities and um, and certainly um, I'm hoping most of you have had the opportunity as as community business leaders to to see and, and comprehend some of the impacts that uh, that he uh, discovered. Um, you'll note that he's been pretty um, assiduous in not uh, indicating recommendations. He's brought data to the table and it's for all of us, uh, for councils, for committees like uh, like this one to consider the implications and whether there's something that uh, could be done to uh, continue to uh, support rural resilience and to help recovery. The council has also been busy with a number of direct issues, uh, some of which are various in the community and and I'm sure some of you are smirking at this point. Uh, the, uh, we have dealt with a requirement from the province to restructure the uh, OPP uh, Police Services Board. Uh, traditionally, North Perth has had its own. Uh, moving forward, the province has mandated there be a detachment level board, which will involve uh, Perth East, North Perth, and West Perth as uh, contributors to this board and a more regional board-based structure. Uh, for uh, be, you know being in, involved with the OPP and um, and managing that relationship, uh, we have uh, begun a process uh, for water meter replacement uh, in North Perth, and that started with the engagement of a consultant um, that uh, was approved by council. Uh, as well, <clears throat> we have authorized a new pedestrian crossover. A new style, the, the style that's similar to some of the other ones that, for example, you see on Main or at Wallace and Crotts at this point. Uh, for Wallace and Inkerman intersection in the downtown of Listowel, uh, I believe we're waiting on MTO approval at this point from the province. So uh, that is pending. People have been asking about that, and um, we're just waiting for provincial consent. Um, we, of course, the, the thing that should have made you smirk in my earlier comment is the one-way traffic experiment. 
on uh, Wallace South, the first block from uh, Maine to Elma. Uh, that experiment has uh, certainly drawn the ire of uh, a number of constituents, but also some approval from constituents as well. And we continue to assert that uh, we're, this is an experiment, we're monitoring and learning from the changes that have happened. And um, we will have uh, interim and final reports that will allow us to consolidate our thinking and, and uh, determine whether the experiment has any legs uh, beyond the October end date for it. Uh, we've also received a draft of a new open air burn bylaw for the municipality, and, and this may have some impacts. Um, we're waiting on the revision for final draft and, and the opportunity to approve a final draft or amend that. Uh, we did support as a council uh, the requests that were made uh, locally by Dr. Wielden uh, pertaining to um, asking the province to support and engage in creating a new deal for optometrists in the province. Uh, we also supported a resolution that decries a possible capital gains tax on principal residences. Uh, many municipalities across Ontario have, have passed resolutions and reached out to the federal government, uh, which of course is in an interim state right now, um, making it plain that we think that that's a mistake. Um, we uh, approved for county council consideration a, uh, an official plan amendment number 34 to the list to award official plan. Uh, this particular official plan amendment uh, adds uh, a new road type to our collection of road types. So we have historically had three different types of road. Roads are categorized. And now we've added a fourth, a collector type. Uh, which is in anticipation of the work of the transportation master plan, which is due at the end of this year. And as well, uh, we cleared up some language in the Lost Ward official plan, which um, essentially prohibited uh, second dwelling units uh, in uh, residential properties, residential zones in North Perth, in Listowel in particular. Uh, the county allowed them, uh, the Listowel Ward official plan did not, and so we just sort of taken care of some administrative business to uh, sync the Listowel Ward official plan with the county's official plan. All of that said, there is a new official plan still uh, working its way through the corridors of power, and um, we expect uh, something uh, perhaps in 2022. Um, we have uh, authorized community engagement for the next municipal election. Uh, the big question for the community is what shall be our voting methods? Uh, historically, North Perth has had a very traditional method of requiring people to turn up at a voting place and to submit a ballot. And uh, we want to know whether we should modernize that. Uh, so I think that consultation is still ongoing and, and we invite to you as, as uh, members of our community to contribute your thoughts about how the next vote should be undertaken. Uh, we've received the first draft of a bylaw to create policy around the use of off-road vehicles. The province um, made some changes in its legislation around off-road vehicles and, uh, and actually kind of reversed the regulation so that um, off-road vehicles are allowed unless municipalities have a bylaw which prohibits them in some way or limits them in some way. And so we received a first draft of that uh, and uh, expect to look at that again in September. We also received a report about um, the uh, award of a grant uh, from the province um, that will allow us to improve the North Perth Trail system. And that includes uh, um, improvements, uh, including expansion near Gowanstown, um, several bridges to be repaired on the North Perth Trail and also the installation of a washroom or restroom facility on the trail for trail users. So that, um, that is pending. And um, I believe we're expecting the work to be done by the end of this year, although some of it could spill over into 2022. Uh, we received favorable uh, well inspection reports. So the water system uh, has uh, filed its annual reports and things were very favorable. And uh, finally, at the last council meeting, uh, we asked for vaccination policy to be brought forward for staff, uh, council and committees. And also uh, we asked uh, for a staff report that uh, includes considerations for possible return to uh, at least hybrid, if not face-to-face um, -face council meetings. Uh, this has been a hot topic, of course, and, and some municipalities have 
acted and then withdrawn their 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 change and um, we would like to take this uh, slow and steady at this point and make sure that, that we have a sensible approach that will allow uh, for the best optimization of um, citizen participation and council participation and yet retain sensible COVID-19 precautions. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions um, from those here about that, these or any other issues at this point. Thank you, Todd. Any questions for the mayor this morning? And no complaints about the traffic. <laughs> uh, Todd, the only question just out of what you spoke about, um, the grant for the public washroom on the trail. I know that's always been a discussion, or at least as long as I've been on the board about potentially creating a public washroom somewhere. Uh, it was always supposed to be in the downtown area that business owners could direct customers to or a public washroom facility. Do you know where they're thinking for the washroom? I have not been advised that. Um, I'm sure that that's, uh, you know, still an active consideration. So I don't know. Okay. okay. I think I saw a question from Sean in the chat. Um, what is the reason behind removing parking in front of Tempest? Um, I not that sure to be honest. Um, the, the consultants, when they came forward with their recommendations, I believe their concern was that straight through traffic flow um, should be as unimpeded in the in that block as possible as it's coming through the lights, and so they made that recommendation to take out those. Um, it, it does feel to me like it may have been over much, but again, in, in the, this experiment, we'll find out uh, whether that's the case or not. Um, uh, you know, it's the, the tricky thing with regards to the, the downtown traffic decisions that have been made is that um, uh, it's easy to, to sort of inject your own thinking into this and, and ask lots of questions about it. and. And we've certainly seen how easy it is to critique uh, this even before it was implemented. Um, but at, at this point, we're largely relying on the experts who are civil and traffic engineers um, and who are giving us advice as to the scope and nature of this experiment. Uh, they came forward with that recommendation and, um, and it was like, okay, well, we're all in. Um, you know, the experts have advised us, let's find out what happens when we do this, right? But my hunch, Sean, is that it, it had to do something with um, trying to ensure as smooth as possible move through the intersection heading uh, east. Todd, I have a question. Sure. Um, um, as far as the the results of this test, do we do we have any plans for for objective metrics and and, and measurements? I haven't seen any measuring devices as far as the traffic flow is concerned. Yeah, or is it public opinion based? Yeah, thanks, Matt. Um, actually, um, I, I think my own inclination is to place more value on the objective metrics than the opinion because. Uh, you know, opinion is valuable, but uh, let's see what the impacts are, right? So I have been chatting with Mr. Couch about uh, the types of measures that should be made uh, on uh, on these um, in this experiment, and um, it it actually um, pleases me to report that they they have given a lot of consideration to what some of the objective measures are, and they are collecting that data. So there are things like Q counts across the time span of the day mm -hmm. and on the weekend that are happening at various intersections to see how people have moved and diverted away from the uh, four-way stop that's at uh, Wallace and, and Elma at this point. Uh, there is intention to consult with local businesses to inquire about impacts, if any, on business and, and uh, walk-in traffic. Um, so there's a number of different measures and a number of different realms. Um, you know, as someone who is trained in the sciences, I was pretty adamant that, that we would have them. And, and Mr. Couch has done a really good job working with the engineers and thinking through and, and identifying what those are. I don't think they've been released um, into the public domain though, Matt, and maybe that's the mistake that we made is we should have identified what some of those measures were going to be as part of the, the sort of objective look at the, this experiment. 
Okay. Lisa, are you getting any comments from business owners about the traffic experiment? And are those, if they are, yeah, I assume you're just forwarding them on? Or... Yeah, so I've, I've talked to Lyndon a few times about it. I got a lot of feedback ahead of time. The, um, the, new, the press release was a little confusing and, and it implied, um, by the way it was written, that there was 14 spots being removed. So that caused a lot of um, anxiety and stress. Um, so I had quite a few businesses reach out. Uh, I talked to Lyndon. He clarified that, no, it's seven. Um, so they updated that information and uh, reworded it, which helped. Um, I've got some feedback on the, um, the, the one parking spot um, for, uh, I'm blanking on the language right now, but the... Uh, the, 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 the needs parking, the um, special needs, like when you need specific parking. So, someone help me out here. The wheelchair, the accessible parking, um, when that one was moved and it's further for people, um, that the business are feeling like they're, they're, they're struggling already um, and now you're taking spots away. So... Um, Lyndon and I talked through that, and he asked um, that I provide all feedback, but also that businesses um, give it a few days while it's happening before um, sending in complaints before they've seen it in action and they've had a time to evaluate it. Um, so that's kind of what I've been um, discussing with businesses, but also sharing any feedback the biggest feedback I'm getting is not actually from the businesses anymore. It's from pedestrians um, and from people that live on Wallace South. Um, and as someone who's been back there, I can understand the, the biggest complaint is it's very, very, very hard to get onto Main Street now without that light there um, at certain times of the day, like making a left-hand turn. Uh, onto Main Street if uh, you don't have that light. The other complaint I'm getting is if you're parking behind um, Krabby Joe's and you want to go to the movies um, or if you're at 10 Pass and you want to go to the movies, let's say you have to do three crosswalks now instead of one um, because they've removed the one crosswalk. So what could, used to take 30 seconds to cross the street or a minute now can take five. So um, that's a little bit of feedback I've gotten. Um, I've also gotten feedback that if this is going to be permanent, that um, Alma Street needs to be fixed because it's in, in very, very, very bad shape. Um, so I provided all that um, feedback to Lyndon. He's very aware of all of it. He, it none of it is a surprise to him. Um, he's been talking to a lot of people, um, but the businesses, uh, since the initial announcement, um, haven't been giving as much feedback. So, um, but my understanding is that there are several businesses that are going to present their concerns and also um, that are seeing it in, in process. The, the Tempest parking did come up um, and it is, from my understanding what Todd said, that they want to make sure they have as much space as possible, but that Lyndon was evaluating it and if at any time they thought they didn't need that space, they would put it back. Um, and that is temporary so that in October of the seven spots, we might get, we might get several back. It might not be that all seven spots have to be gone um, after they do the study. So, um, so that's what I'm getting. Okay. Any further questions for Todd or any follow-up on what Lisa just stated? Not hearing any. Okay. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, moving on to economic development update from Kim, if you could. Thanks. I um, hope everyone had a good summer and uh, hopefully it continues for a little while longer. <clears throat> just wanted to give a, a quick update on a few activities for the economic development department. Um, so 
as as noted, we um, did submit that application to the Canadian um, um, CHCI, um, the North Prairie Connectivity Suites application. We do not hear back on that one until September. So that, um, as a reminder, is just to enable businesses who do not have um, consistent connectivity for entrepreneurs, um, for people who are possibly in rural areas or don't have um, reliable access that, that it would be to fund um, new spaces that are underutilized or to create additional spaces for for businesses. So that's that's that project. We also have applied for the Canada Community Revitalization Fund, CCRF, at the end of July. And that project is going to be, um, it is for improving um, public spaces to assist with COVID, but um, downtown revitalization and that that is one of their focus areas and so we did submit a funding application for the um, the park yet that we have for, um, recommended previously to that is on Main Street that um, would increase we, it has been a bit of a pilot having park benches there or sorry picnic tables there um, currently and it would also, um, we've applied for seating area that was a, a little bit different from prior applications as well as uh, public art. So trying to have it be a draw to the area, but also providing ample space outdoors so that people can use it for eating to support the businesses, but also um, have it be a draw to the downtown. So we, um, don't know we have not heard on the timing of the decision on that but um that's been with them for, for a month now um we the um the facade improvement program has been progressing well we do have two confirmed projects um we are um, expecting a couple more within the next couple of weeks and just finalizing some of those um, details as well as we have approved projects in Moncton and in Atwood um, all which I think are going to make significant um, contributions to the um, facade, to the to the beautification of the downtown. So we're, we're pleased with how that's moving. There has been some, um, the, the timing for projects will be, um, as, as Lisa mentioned earlier on, things are um, slower than had been anticipated. Contractors are extremely busy, which is a good sign, but that, that um, that may have an impact on some of the projects and their timing, but they are moving forward. So we're, we're happy with that. Um, and the, the Driftscape um, app, so we did launch that app the end of July. And so just to, to give a bit more background on that one, so that has been identified in the strategic plan. It, it is in response to looking for ways to promote things to do to um, the youth demographics. So one of the things in the youth attraction strategic plan was that youth are not um, aware or don't feel um, notified of things that are happening or things that they can do in the community. And they, they tend not to use traditional social media. They tend not to come to websites. So we're looking at alternative ways to communicate that information. And Driftscape is an app. It's a phone-based app that um, is on Android as well as um, Apple, but you can also now access it on um, desktop um, if, if, that's some, if people are wanting to search from home. They, the Driftscape um, organization has 30,000 um, members to the app currently. So it is also a, a significant opportunity for us to, um, as people are traveling through North Perth to that, that have the app, to, to be able to see all the different experiences and businesses, places to eat um, that they can, can enjoy. But our target and the, the businesses experiences that we're highlighting are, that will, that will be of particular interest to that group and it is a um, continuing to evolve. We will be adding new experiences. Um, we are limited to the total number of points of interest that can be included on the app. So we may um, switch some out. One thing that we, um, we have had this 
planned or we had um, been considering this and was in the strategic plan. So obviously pre-COVID, but it is a real opportunity for us to promote and help with recovery for businesses that they can do some research before they come through the community and then um, and then take advantage of that research. There's a little bit more information than what you would find in a Google search. It takes them directly to their website. We have links to social media or just a, a summary with some photos. We'll be increasing our photos that are on there as well. We did add a second layer that includes North Perth Eats. So we've included all of the restaurants that are um, in North Perth. That was not initially planned, um, but we have um, added a layer so that, and organized it so that it, it's more focused on dine-in, takeout, and then more sweets and treats, ice cream and, and bakery items and things like that. So, so feedback has been very positive. We have had some good media contact. We'll continue to promote that, um, having social media going out for the next month planned, but continuing on to help drive that um, focus in, in North Perth as for visitors and for residents that are, that are younger as well. Um, we will be reaching out more to the younger portion of that demographic as, um, as our next efforts. So that's, that's the area where, um, any questions about that, about Driftscape? So we'll, um, so we'll continue to, to utilize that and move forward in the coming, coming uh, days. We also have, um, are working to, con to integrate the results of the Mayor's Task Force as well as the Youth Attraction Strategic Plan with our strategic plan. And that's been a focus is moving through some of those commitments to get um, youth attraction as well as concerns about labor market um, revitalization and um, and um, workforce attraction to, to continue our momentum on that um, at this time. So that's that's been a, a focus as we continue to implement our strategic plan. Those are, those are really the key things I wanted to emphasize this morning. I'm gonna be happy to take any questions if anyone has questions. Okay, thank you, Kim. Any questions from anybody on that? Oh, I'm sorry, I did forget one item. <laughs> we, um, Rural Economic Development, the RED program has just reopened. So it opened um, the end of July, closes October 1st. So we are looking at submitting an application to um, it's similar funding levels and structure as in prior, app, um, prior rounds of funding. That is the program that the facade program has been funded under currently. And the deadline for application is October 1st. So we'll be looking at um, projects that align with the strategic objectives, plus I'm sure consider current times to help um, improve, uh, help serve business as well as foster economic growth. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Kim. Uh, moving on to the Perth County update from Ashley. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, so as you may or may not have seen on our social media pages and our website, we have launched our experiential tourism program called Discover More Adventures. So we've been working behind the scenes with businesses all year to um, get them prepared to be able to offer these immersive experiences to give visitors a new reason to come visit them and extend their stay. So, so far we've launched two of these experiences. We have a third launching this week, and then we have another four in the docket to be launched by the end of October. Um, so we're on track to continue to, to launch new experiences all year long. These are being promoted largely on social media. Um, you'll also maybe hear some radio ads and, and see them in various ads when you're scrolling online. Um, just trying to get the word out there that these businesses have something new to offer um, 
and people should, should check them out as things continue to open up and they're looking for things to do outside of their home. Moving on to cycle tourism, I believe I mentioned at the previous meeting that Perth County, the town of St. Mary's, and the city of Stratford have collectively joined Ontario Road Bike. Um, this is a certification network that helps uh, tap into the growing market of cycle tourism. We continue to put intention into cycle tourism development, and to that, we have recently developed a cycle routes map that features routes um, in the city of Stratford, as well as all throughout uh, the county of Perth. This map has just came in from the printer and I hope to have it delivered to the chamber office, the municipal office, and, and all those destinations where residents and visitors might go to pick up those uh, pieces by the end of the week and following the delivery of the map to all the pickup destinations, we will be promoting it online to hopefully attract cyclists um, in the tail end of cycle season uh, as we enter the fall. To that, in August, we hosted an event on the G2G rail trail called Tastings on the Trail. It was the first of its kind, but I would say it was a success. We were stationed at the three uh, trailheads in Perth County that are on the G2G trails. So in Moncton, Millbank and Milverton, handing out various local food items from nearby businesses to increase awareness uh, of trail users of what's nearby the trail. As well, it offered us an opportunity to converse with the trail users, talk about where the cyclists coming from, um, and get some more information to, to help us as we continue to develop cycle tourism in the area. Uh, we still have a handful of welcoming communities training licenses left over at this time. So this is an online learning experience that includes three course modules, each taking under two hours. And these courses include the essentials of inter intercultural competency, effective intercultural communication, and power dynamics and system discrimination. So this training is entirely free to Perth County um, employers and employees. If you or your business is interested in taking this training, please reach out to myself or a member of the Perth County Economic Development and Tourism team and we can set you up with um, licenses for the training for yourself and, and whomever you'd like to take it, this training at your company. Next is our PC Connect update. PC Connect has now been in operation for nine months and has been providing residents with affordable and reliable transportation. Um, as I may or may not have mentioned at the last meeting, I, I can't remember at this time, but our uh, PC Connect project funding has been extended for an additional two years beyond the 2023 project date. So we're excited at the potential of offering the service um, for a longer period of time as it was a bit of a struggle to get it off the ground, launching it in, amid a pandemic. But uh, ridership trends are positive, so we look forward to continuing to promote uh, the PC Connect system. My final update is on the digital transformation grants. So applications are now being accepted for a new round of this uh, grant until October 31st or until funds are exhausted. So we do encourage people to get applications in early if this is something that you or your business is interested in applying for. Um, on this note, we're getting a digital service squad member back on our team. Uh, Eileen is starting next week and she'll be able to assist businesses with applying to the digital transformation grant, as well as other um, digital things you may need assistance with. So we look forward to having a digital service squad team member back, back at Perth County and any information you want on the digital transformation grant between now and when our squad member starts, you can find at 
digitalmainstreet.ca or again reach out to a member of the Perth County Economic Development and Tourism team. Um, that's it for my updates this week and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Ashley. Any questions for Ashley this morning? Not hearing any. Okay. Uh, so we'll move on to uh, the last item on the agenda this morning, which should be uh, Lisa, board updates and recruitment. You want to talk about that briefly? You're on mute, Lisa, I think. Sorry, my kids were leaving and it was just really loud in here. Um, if anyone who's not part of the board wants to head out, you can. Uh, we're just talking about a potential new board member. So, um, yeah, so that is, we have uh, Carolyn Young, who works at Libro and is very interested in joining the board. Um, Carolyn Young is employed by Libro Credit Union as a small business specialist and is fully supported in her attempts to join the Whistle BIA as a board member. Um, she's Virginia, who's the, the manager, is excited about what Carolyn can bring to the board as well as the information she can gain regarding the business community in Listable. Um, so she works at Libro here in Listable and Wingham, and uh, would like to join our team representing Libra. She works closely with the small businesses in both Wingham and Listowel and is a supporter of uh, those businesses. And like I said, she is a small business specialist. Okay, any questions or concerns about that? I believe we need the same process or same recommendation that we did for Alex, that we have to request uh, counsel for their consideration of this applicant to the board. Is that correct, Nicole? Okay, I see a nod. Um, so any questions or concerns about someone else wanting to join us? I doubt there is. Um, so I need a mover and a seconder on that as well. So if I get a mover. I can see Matthew did that. If I get a seconder, Matt Ash, and uh, all in favor. I assume everybody's in favor. So we'll say carried on that. And lastly, Lisa, there was the, the one item, I think, under other business. Maybe um, I think we lost Todd, but that shouldn't matter. Uh, just about board member recognition, which was uh, in the minutes from a while ago. You've updated the uh, suggested policy on that. Um, I know it wasn't circulated to the board prior to this meeting, but it's it's fairly straightforward. Do you want to just give a, an overview of the what we're proposing? And then I suspect we could get a vote on it and, and put it in place for you. Sure. So it's very similar to what was sent to you for the non-gift recognition policy. Um, the purpose is that retiring directors be recognized by the school BIA um, for their years of voluntary service. Um, one to two terms of service is a letter from the board chair. If the board chair is the one leaving, then the vice chair would do it. And three or more terms of service is a letter from the board chair and a letter from the mayor. The mayor has uh, it, it said in writing that that is fine with him. Um, as well, all board members will be invited to attend the yearly Municipality of North Perth Volunteer Appreciation Night, which is hosted by Council. So that is it. So we removed the gift because all of you guys are great and just want to do this to help your businesses and you don't want a gift. So that's fine. So any questions or concerns from anybody about that? It, it really doesn't put any onus or emphasis on the board to do anything. It, it, it creates a, a letter has to come from myself or whoever's the chair at the time or the vice chair. And uh, if somebody's on the board for any great length of time, then they uh, would get a letter from the mayor as well. So it's pretty straightforward, uh, but it's just a policy that least it can reference. If there's no questions or concerns about that, then can we put that in place as well? I gotta get a mover. Only two I can see are Matthew and Alex. I don't know if anybody else has got a hand up or. OK, 
Okay, Matthew is a mover. I need a seconder. Alex, okay. second to that. And all in favor? Again, I'm assuming everybody without hearing anything. So we'll say that's carried and then that's in place going forward. Okay, we're uh, three minutes over on my clock, but that was good. Um, if anybody has any other business they want to talk about this morning? And again, welcome, Alex. Thank you for your uh, willingness to join our board. Appreciate that. Thank we'll you. Meet you sometime. Thank you for uh, having yeah. me. <laughs> okay, then uh, if I could have a, a mover and a seconder to close the meeting out this morning. That should be the easy yeah. one for everybody. Matthew again, Alex, all in favor. I'm sure that's a big yes. Okay, everybody. Have a great day. Enjoy your day, everyone. Great day.